Well, Farmer Jesse here. So having access to good compost that you can trust and that will truly feed your soil has been an issue for us and lots of other growers for many years. This is kind of a problem because we use a lot of compost on our farm. It's our primary mulch and we use it to start garden beds. Last year alone, for instance, we used something like 120 yards on three quarters of an acre to get our farm sort of up and running. Over the last two years, however, uh, the price, the cost of compost has gone up considerably and we are having to make more and more of our own compost. But there are two pretty big challenges with that. One, we don't own a tractor for moving and turning large amounts of compost. And two, because we're certified organic, we can only use NOP compliant, that is National Organic Program compliant compost. And I'll dive deeper into the organic thing presently, but we've been weighing our compost options going forward and we decided to do something I've always wanted to do. Yes, since I was born. Build a static aerated compost system, more commonly referred to as aerated static pile or ASP, but I don't really know why they call it that. Aerated static pile, it sounds like the static is aerated. That's so awkward. But anyway, this system requires no turning, thus can be done without a tractor, and in theory it expedites the composting process and will supplement, if not fully supplant, some of our compost needs. Or maybe none of the above. Yeah, so let's do it. First things first, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, did I say button? Is that even a word? If you are subscribed, you're awesome. And if you gain something from this video or any of our videos, you can always support our work at patreon.com slash no till growers. All right, so there are a few different elements uh, to all of this that need to be discussed before I actually break down the pieces and parts that I am using for this particular system. Uh, but because I don't like wasting anyone's time, if you just truly don't care about the context, and you're already sold on static aerated compost, uh, you can go to this time here to see how to set that up. However, I think the context is important because it truly may or may not make sense to build this system for everyone, uh, maybe even for myself. First, this is the first iteration and attempt at this system for us, so may not be perfect, but I did have some really good help along the way from my buddy uh, Troy Hinky of Living Roots Compost Tea, as well as David Ladner of the Pedal Powered Root Washer fame. Click here to watch that video because it's awesome. Uh, also, this was partly inspired by Jay Armour's system at Four Winds Farm and from a lot of random things I read on the internet. So you may very well be able to come up with something better. Uh, second, the goal is not to make the most incredible compost in the world. It's to make good thermophilic compost that can be applied in relative bulk. Thermophilic just meaning heated up to kill the weed seeds and the diseases, etc. So applied in bulk and mostly as a mulch for us. And I need it relatively quickly, six months if possible, but you know, I'm willing to wait a little while. So essentially I just want to make a mulching compost and I may also feed some of this to the worms. Hi wormies. I just said mulching compost and I described the four different types of compost in the Living Soil Handbook. So pick that up from no-till growers to support this work. Anyway, I need to probably explain the organic certification thing briefly so that you understand the parameters I personally have to meet for our compost. In organic certification, in order to use compost that contains any animal manures on your garden, there are a few somewhat bizarre and honestly not super scientific rules, not always, uh, but they are rules nonetheless. In effect, to the organic certifiers, not all compost is compost. For a compost containing any manure at all to be considered legit compost for immediate use on certified organic farms, it must follow one of these two paths. In a windrow system, a temperature between 131 and 171 degrees Fahrenheit, or somewhere between those temperatures, must be maintained and dutifully recorded for 15 days, and the pile must be turned five times within that period. Or alternatively, for an in-vessel or static aerated pile, compost should maintain those same temperatures for only three days, no turning is required. It's kind of a wild contrast between those two things, but everything else is considered manure if it contains any manure and has not followed one of those processes and been recorded. So effectively, even if this is the greatest compost in the world, it is just manure to the organic certifiers. 
And I know I'm getting a little bit in the weeds here, but it's important to know this because you can still use quote unquote manure, but it must be applied 120 days before any crop touching the ground, like a beet or a carrot or lettuce head, uh, or it must be applied 90 days before any above ground crops are harvested, such as a tomato or a pepper. In essence, I have to meet those standards to be able to apply my compost within 90 days of harvesting. That's really important for us. So yeah, although I make a lot of small compost piles by hand uh, for inoculating compost as detailed in the Living Soil Handbook, and I do follow those rules, but even turning a small pile five times is a massive pain to do by hand. And so I wanted a system that was simply set it and forget it, but still met the organic guidelines and made a decent compost. Uh, so that's how we get to the static aerated pile. So the idea behind static aeration is that it's easier to maintain your temperatures within the pile and more evenly distribute oxygen, which many beneficial aerobic organisms, aerobic meaning just oxygen loving organisms, um, use in the decomposition process. That eliminates the need to turn the pile. Also supposedly that helps to speed up the process slightly or can, though I have not personally witnessed that yet. However, I'm only three piles in and did not maintain enough moisture in the first pile, so I'll have to report back on whether or not this static aerated system is truly more expeditious, this one in particular. Uh, I'll do that in later videos. But essentially, this is a system in which I can pile the ingredients, monitor the temperatures, and then use it. Again, in theory. All right, so let's go through the parts that I used and some ways it could be modified potentially. Also, feel free to add your comments in the comment section. Where else would you add them, I guess? On any improvements or suggestions you would have to make this system better or a similar system or an easier system, simpler system, go for it. I will link the blower I bought, but I'm not going to link the things like PVC pipe because you do not need to get that shipped to you. Just go to the place with plumbing supplies. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay, so speaking of plumbing supplies, first I needed about 17 feet of large PVC pipe for the manifold. Manifold just meaning the head of the system or the main bracing. I used four inch PVC, but six inch would give you better airflow. I also purchased two 90 degree elbows and three T couplings to piece it all together. Uh, so three four foot pipes, one cut in half to insert the blower, plus five one foot pieces of pipe to extend off the manifold to connect the drainage tile. I don't think they necessarily have to be a foot long for any reason, um, as far as I can tell. It just makes connecting the aeration pipes to the PVC manifold a little bit easier. Now, I also bought four 12 foot lengths of four inch drainage pipe already perforated. I'm a little unsure if that was the right move because you could buy pipe without holes and drill your own. You know, maybe just like only on the top um, to sort of better concentrate the airflow, but so far so good. If you do drill your own holes, just make a lot of them. I, I feel like a lot in the top and none on the bottom would be a lot better. I also put caps on the end and I taped the drainage pipes to the manifold to limit air loss, uh, but I don't think you'd have to. In fact, it may not be a good idea. One thing people who use this system with a tractor and front end loader do is they pull those pipes out with the tractor before harvesting the compost. So you know, so as not to like mash the drainage tile in the process. And the airflow and pressure is not enough to pop the pipes off or anything. It's maybe not necessary to tape them. And like when I say it's not a lot of pressure, it's barely enough, maybe even not enough to blow a little piece of paper off of it. You just feel air coming out of it. It's pretty light. Because when I first envisioned this system, I sort of imagined it being like blowing on a fire, but that's not really the case. It's more just like adding oxygen to the system. And so, yeah, if the pipes are connected, you obviously can't yank them out very easily. So that's important. Uh, the blower is a bouncy house blower. I'll link that in the show notes. Like I said, I have not tried any other brands, so I can't say if this is the best blower. It had good reviews and it's still working, you know, a few months later. So seemingly this is a good one. I also bought a programmable cycle timer, which allows me to automatically have the blower come on for one minute at a time every hour, and that can be adjusted as needed. My buddy Troy Hinky uh, of Living Roots Compost Tea recommended 
running the blower for longer periods of time and shorter intervals if the pile gets too hot or shorter periods of time and longer intervals if the compost gets too cool. Intervals is a really weird word to say. Just adjust that as needed. I have housed the blower, as you can see, and the timer in an old tote, though I have seen people using a doghouse too, just something to keep it out of the rain. Um, make sure, however, that there is an ample hole on the side because the blower draws in significant amounts of air and not having a hole there will wear out the motor pretty quickly. So in practice, you start with a few inches of wood chips to sort of help further diffuse the oxygen into the pile. Then you pile all the rest of your material in layers or however it makes sense for you over the top of the pipes. Then just let the system do the rest. As I mentioned, the goal was to reduce the labor required to make compost, but this system does definitely not eliminate labor. I recommend getting help or having a tractor or skid steer or something to assist you in piling the material or at least dropping it into the wheelbarrow so you can pile it. It's a ridiculous amount of work to move enough material to cover your entire system by hand, but that's any compost pile. So at least not having to turn it is a huge bonus, especially not five times in a 15 day period. Like seriously, the contrast between those two types of compost really doesn't make any sense to me. A general compost note here, uh, I'm going for roughly 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. So uh, partially composted food scraps with some blood meal, blood meal because I don't have a ton of nitrogen sources right now. And this was kind of a trial run, so I'm just playing around. Plus, I added some other compost layered with a bunch of fresh wood chips that themselves were pretty green then a lot of water. The water is really important here. Water is a requisite for the enzymatic activities that microbes employ to break down organic materials. And the heat generated in the composting process causes evaporation. So you need a lot of water for compost production, but it also improves the water holding capacity of soil. So it's kind of like adding water to your soil indirectly. No idea what I was talking about. Water is an area of my system that needs improvement. And in, in the future, I'll be setting up a tank or some sort of thing strictly dedicated to this pile. Then when the pile begins to heat up, I keep the whole thing covered to ensure better heat distribution and to help hold in some of that moisture. Um, I write down my temperatures using a long temperature composting thermometer. I also write down everything I used in the pile and when it was created with a general guess as to the carbon nitrogen ratio. That way I can show those notes to the organic inspectors when I get an inspection. Um, in an ideal world, like one where I own a skid steer or a tractor with a front end loader, I would hit my temperatures with a pile, then remove the compost to another location to mature and start a new pile. This I think is where this would really shine. This system, you could do a ton theoretically do a ton of compost from enough for myself and for others uh, you could set up a pile get it to the temperatures move that pile off once a week and then restock your pile and you could do that multiple times during the growing season enough to get hundreds of yards of compost doing all that by hand however would be ludicrous anyway like i said i'm, I'm generally i'm i'm not trying to make a really amazing compost. I'm trying to make a decent compost for surface applications that is NOP compliant, uh, but I'm still working to get as many different feedstocks um, in there as possible. That's the key for me making as diverse of a compost as I can. I think this system enables me to do that, even if it's still a lot of work. Overall, this system is fine and it creates an organic compost. It cost me several hundred dollars to build so far, but it could save me thousands every year on compost, especially if I can maintain my wood chip source and find a few good nitrogen sources, and especially, especially if I rented a skid steer occasionally to help move and pile it. Anyway, I am still in the beginning stages of this process, so I will keep you updated on how it goes, uh, but it is technically working. I also notably ran it by two groups of organic certifiers, and at least they approved. And in fact, I guess a lot of people who are certified don't actually make a lot of their own compost because the rules are intimidating. Um, hopefully this changes that a bit. Um, does that mean every certifier will approve of this particular system? I can't make any guarantees, I have no idea. But I do think those having those certifiers give it the more or less the thumbs up uh, does bode well. Anyway, 
that's it for now on this system. Like this video if you like this video, subscribe to this channel to follow along, and let me know what questions or thoughts you have, improvements you'd make. I no doubt missed some stuff because my wife is out of town this week, and I can't honestly believe I even got a video done at all. Uh, so that's rad. If you appreciate that, maybe consider picking up a copy of my book, The Living Soil Handbook, from notillgrowers.com. When you buy it from us specifically, the proceeds go to making you more content like this. That's cool, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye.